What's up, YouTube? Hope everybody doing good tonight. Uh, today is my birthday, so me and the wife decided to um, do a little something afterwards. You know, we had an amazing day. The girl surprised me with something special, and she surprised me with a great dinner from one of the restaurants that we love. Uh, it's something we're supposed to be doing for a while, so we're finally making the time while we can do it. So, wife can ask me a few questions. All right. So, you often refer to yourself as Mr. Go Harder. Right, correct. Who is Mr. Go Harder? Mr. Go Harder for me is, it's almost like a Superman power for me. It's a person that I get to tap into outside of who I am and just become beast mode, become the version that nobody saw, become the version that I never saw, become the version that my family and myself benefits from. And it's one of those things where I'm going to set a goal, I'm going to lock in, and I'm going to go hard until I get to it. That's Mr. Go Harder. Okay. What do you see for yourself in five or 10 years from now? Um, I'm gonna add a little bit to it. In nine to 10 years, I plan to be done with the river. Uh, I feel like I have maxed out what I'm chasing. So now, you know, before it was, I give the breakdown for some that don't know. You know, when I started back in October, was it 27 20 no, no october 25th 2011 um it was um that was a green deckhand then it became a spirits deckhand then it was a senior deckhand lead man relief mate first mate senior mate then i got my steersman license then i became a steersman then i became a pilot then you know once i seen you know the uh the difference in the pay and the difference in you know, how the office views you versus your opinion and your abilities and also mainly that pay, you know, work my way up to relief captain. And then ultimately I wanted to be the head captain. So just coming from that, it just, you know, I felt like, you know, I've reached what I wanted to reach, uh, made great money and I'm very thankful for it. But now the challenge is almost lost almost, you know, thank God I've been able to travel all over. Um, but the challenge is no longer there. And ever since high school, I've been saying this for a while. I feel like a shaking up soda can that hasn't been opened yet. And I still feel like that. So at this point, really trying to figure out what God got for me. So honestly, instead of saying five, I'm going to say 10 years, I want to be done with the river. And at this point, I'm going to have to step out on faith because I have no clue what I exactly want to do. And honestly, I don't want to put all the trust in myself on what I want to do. As it says, do not lean on your own understanding. So I'm really trying to lean on God. Please guide me to where I'm supposed to be because I don't want to do anything that's outside of that. Okay. And the vision for your family? Okay. Definitely the vision. Um, thank God. One of the visions is uh, I told my wife when I first married her that uh, she stick with me. I'll make it worth her while. So one of the things was get the college debt paid off. Uh, she never had a brand new vehicle at the time, of course, and we took care of that. She's on a second one. So the vision is mainly is to make sure that the queen is always taken care of, uh, make sure she's always in the best. Uh, we're in our fourth brand new construction home, thank God. Um, we have three girls now, so ultimately just thinking, you know, sweet 16, daddy going to take care of that. Uh, they say tradition, you know, um, father of the girls pay for all the weddings, so um Take care of that too. So mainly the vision is just making sure that everything is taken care of. The road is paved and um, being able to be a blessing to others, you know, cause we already living in our blessings. So to be able to bless others. And I think it was a rapper that said, you're not a boss until you create other bosses. So before it was, you know, how bright can I shine? You know, doing everything to make sure that everybody knows Anthony, but it's like, okay, once you do that, then what? So creating other people. And like I said, make sure y'all always good. And you do that oh so well. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay. What is different from 23 when we first met mm -hmm. till now? Again, happy birthday, baby. Thank you, thank you. Um, at 32. 23, I was really just tapping into everything. So it was a lot of things that I didn't know. I didn't put in a lot of time to know certain things. Um, didn't know to. You know, the standards, I wouldn't say they were set low, but they wasn't set high either. You know, the standards coming out of the house was graduate high school and don't bring no baby home. But I had to take it a, a step further than that. Now, my grandma used to teach me, you know, each generation is supposed to exceed the next. Um, so I really stuck on that and really had to make it happen. So honestly, it's just 
just keeping this ball rolling. That's the vision. Keep the ball rolling. Keep going. At 23, like I said, I didn't know much. Now at 32, I've grabbed, I, I've grabbed enough wisdom. And one thing that I do do that I advise people to do, once I hit 30, I started calling people that was in their 50s, 60s, and 70s. And I would ask them, at the age you're right now, what would you tell your 30 year old self? You know, because I wanted to know, okay, avoid this role, you know, avoid doing this, avoid entertaining this or being around these type of people, because honestly, you know, they've already been down the roads. I don't have to go down that road again if somebody's already been down it. You know, that's the that's the best part about wisdom. Wisdom, you can only gain it from experience, but also you can gain it from someone else's experience. And that's why I've been able to uh, dodge a lot of bullets. Um, so that's just mainly it, wisdom for me. You know, it's a lot that I didn't know at 23, at 32. There's still a lot to grab, but at the same time, I'm a lot sharper than 23. So now I'm trying to grab it before, you know, 42 comes that I don't have it all wrapped up, but I'm way further. And then with you guys following this channel, I want to be able to continue this so people can um, grow with me along the process. Okay. What would you tell the young Anthony? Wow. What would the young Anthony say? What would I tell Or what him? would you tell the young Anthony? One thing that I struggled with in the beginning was I never wanted to do anything alone. You know, I told the wife this and I tried to tell her, you know, don't get it confused. This is not to subtract you. I would tell my younger self, travel by yourself. See what's all out here. Because, see, I come from a small town where, you know, it wasn't much to see. So, you know, you go to a big city, you think you're in the scene and all. No, you haven't. You know, you haven't came around the right people. Um, I'm learning now, network, get you a group of people that somewhat think like you, of course, be on the same page, uh, you know, productive wise, but network with people, um, travel around the world to see different demographics, different people, how people move, um, because if you only see one way, that's all you know. And I believe it was a uh, old running back. His name is Fred Taylor. I originally met him, not met him, but... Uh, Got up to speed with him on um, I Am Athlete. They're on the pivot now. I think with Ryan Clark. And he said, exposure leads to expansion. So if you don't see much, you, you can't want for much. And I've always wanted much. So I had to start getting around people that was talking that and walking it and just trying to figure out how can I get a piece of the pie. Um, so for me, don't be afraid to do anything alone. And I was, you know, like what's going on now with podcasts. I remember I tried to get with a group of guys out of high school and, you know, we all thought, uh, thought different. And it was about like what you see now on the podcast. But see, back then it wasn't called podcast. A lot of people weren't even doing it. And I'm like, I'm seeing now everything that I tried to do then, it's happening now. And people are profiting. And just and if they're not profiting, they're they're having a good time on Iron Sharper and Iron. And with me, I wasn't even looking for it profit-wise. It was just, I'm the Iron Sharper and Iron guy. I love to be around people where we can have great conversation. That's all I wanted it for. So for the younger people, don't be afraid to do shit by yourself. Go experience life, travel. Um, honestly, gain as much wisdom as you can. If you got a grandma, you got an uncle, ask them questions. You know, if you're 23, 19, ask them. If, even if they're at 50, what would you tell your 19-year-old self? What would you tell your 20-year-old self? And learn from what they're saying. Um, and don't think that because they went through something that it can't happen to you, it could be 10 times worse. You know, I've seen a lot of people where a lot of situations didn't work out for them. And that taught me, don't go down that road, you know. Um, and honestly, I was talking to a guy on the boat. And he was like, man, Trey, well, you got a lot of wisdom. And I said, man, I appreciate you. But I have an old soul. I hung around a lot of old people. Um, but it, it saved me in the long run. It truly did. Okay. So you say about, or you talk about retirement in 10 years. Does Mr. Go Harder stop in 10 years? No, no. This is something that doesn't stop. Uh, for those that may be seeing this for the first time or the ones that have been continuing with me, thank you for the 900, uh, 900 subscribers. I appreciate it. Um, it doesn't stop. Like, I feel like when it's when it's in your bloodline, this is who you are. Actually, I got it tatted on my arm. So this is, this is who I am. This is what it's about, to be honest with you. I say it all the time, and I want people to hear this. I couldn't even get a job in Atlanta airport to pass out peanuts or to push somebody around in a wheelchair. So when I prayed to God and I said, if you get the train on the track and you get it started, I promise you I'll keep feeding the coals. How dare I stop? How dare I say thank you for the house? 
Thank you for the cars me and my wife brought, uh, drive brand new. Thank you for the money we have in the account. Thank you for allowing us to be able to go and do what we want to do, travel and all that other stuff. And I just stopped. You know, these videos touch somebody. You know, somebody, I'm not on the TI level. I'm not on the Steve Harvey level. Somebody need to see this level right here and understand the climb that's coming with it. And if you pay attention to the channel, you'll see the climb. I didn't start it back in the day because I wasn't thinking about it. And honestly, I didn't want to be this too uh, open with people. Um, but I noticed for me to be effective, I got to be effective. So those stories that I tell you, I don't care to tell people my personal stories about what I went through. Um, and if you look at my videos, I didn't went back and told how I got fired, you know, back in what was that 2017, 2021. I don't want to share my business, but I want to help somebody. And when I look at videos, it's helping people and it helped me. So it's like, you know, I want to do the same thing. So no, nah, Mr. Go Harder don't stop. If anything, he grows and he gets better with time. He gets sharper. And honestly, my family benefits from it. So Mr. Go Harder, don't stop. Okay, okay. Um, I know that several things have been spoken over our lives and um, we've heard several people say what they saw for us doing mm -hmm. for others and stuff like that. Do you still see yourself as a mentor for young males, young children, troubled children? I would love to. I would love to for the simple fact that I believe I do have a story of my own to share with folks. And I won't go into details with this video. It would mainly be with people that really need it because your story can't, you, you can't give your story to everybody. You know, it's almost like throwing seeds on uh, concrete. It ain't going nowhere. So you can only throw seeds on good ground. And some places, like on the boats where I've been able to do that, uh, I've enjoyed doing it. And most of the guys that do follow me, you know, they'll take heed from it. Like I've gotten, um, you know, texts from plenty of guys. I've gotten uh, comments on my YouTube videos, emails, and guys saying, you know, they appreciate what I'm doing or appreciate what I've said or what I've shared. And that means a lot. That's what, that's honestly, that's why I do this. You know, uh, me and my wife could be doing some other things, but, you know, I wanted to take this time to do this and have her with me, you know, um, and just really take advantage of the time to do it. So, no, I definitely want to take advantage of mentoring people. Um, People like Tyler Perry, Steve Hart, people I've never met in my life, they don't know how much they've poured in me and I haven't even met them. So that's the same thing that I want to do. Whether I meet you or not, I want you to understand you're not alone. You know, whatever you're going through, if you go through my um, videos, you'll, you'll find something that speaks to you. And if you keep following, you'll find something. All right. So we are in year eight of our marriage. Mm -hmm. What do you deem as one of your uh, greatest accomplishments possibly in your personal life and in your career? Okay. Personal life and career. Now you're speaking for myself or you? Or with us? Whatever, babe. Whatever. Um, I guess since you brought up our marriage, for us, the fact that I was able to keep my word when I told you, if you stick with me, I'll make it worth your while. Mm -hmm. Um... You know, you want your college debt paid off, that's taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, you got your first brand new vehicle. And I'll give you the story of why she had, what was that? What was the year of that Lincoln? Oh, you got to tell about my Lincoln. Well, what was the year? Uh, 99. So she had a 99 and it looked like it too. <laughs> a 99 Navigator. I yeah. was riding. Yeah, she was riding. <laughs> and a suspension, what was that? The, the airbags, whatever it was, yeah. it was messed up. But anyway, uh, it got her from where she needed to be, point A to point B. That bad boy had a nice engine, too. It did. Yeah, that bad boy could push. But I remember when she, um, were you pregnant uh, with our first one? Yes. Okay, so so you didn't have it yet? No. Okay, so she's pregnant with our first baby. And I remember I was on a boat, and she was in uh, Concord Mill Mall down there in Charlotte. And I believe, what, you got a flat? Yeah, I got a flat tire. Yeah, now, so, I don't know. Right. I just came back to my car and the tire was flat. Right, so she got a flat tire when, you know, she's at the mall. And I'm the man's man. So immediately, I'm like, oh, hell no, nah, we can't have that. Because, see, this is a fixer-upper. So there is no insurance. There is nobody coming out to do nothing. Nah, come on. Okay, girl. go ahead. Come go ahead. On. You know, now you can have State Farm and all that. But if you don't have that package, you ain't getting none of that. And she ain't had that package. But anyway, um... <laughs> I wanted to make sure that, you know, when you with me, I'm, I'm finna have everything taken care of. So immediately, I didn't like that. You pregnant with my firstborn, you're my wife, and it's like, nah, you ain't set up right. This ain't how it's supposed to be. So immediately, it's like, you know, we got to go and get rid of that. So we went ahead and sold that, and we had, what was it, the Ram truck, which is mine. And I wasn't home like that. I was riding the boat, so we rode, we rode with the Ram how long? Ooh, 
for a minute. Yeah, we rode the Ram for a minute. So we just had one vehicle. And, I, and I, at that time, I was building my money up to be able to do what I said I was going to do for her. And uh, eventually, money got up. And I think we was in the third home by that point. And yep. we had got uh, that brand new Kia Telluride, boy. I remember when she showed it to him. I'm like, man, that ain't no damn Kia. But uh, when she showed it to me, that bad boy was clean. It had everything in it that we needed. And... Um, I swear I was like the third person in Charlotte to have one. Nobody had one. And they were selling like hot cakes. I called the people at meeting. I'm like, look, this is the one she said she wanted. She wants the green one. I said, I don't want no miles on it. Like, Mr. Trill, well, we got to at least do the run <laughs> test on it. I said, as soon as you get off the truck, I don't want nobody in it. But you know, they got to do the test. I wanted the way it was brand new for and which it was. it was, I wanted it to where, you know, she, and honestly, everything was taken care of. She had to sign probably about three pages and boom, she was up out of it because everything else was taken care of. And that's what I wanted for because, you know, I wanted to, hey, if you get a flat, some, uh, hit a button, somebody coming, you know, something ain't right. She'll call and tell you anything go wrong. If she call me, I'm on the phone with somebody immediately. Hey, this need to get fixed. Oh, Mr. Trail, it don't work. I don't give a damn how it works. This is how I need to work. This is what I need. Whatever we need to pay, whatever we need to do, and especially if I got it from a dealership, hey, whatever I got to say, it better get done because I ain't the one that, that we ain't waiting for the talk too long. If I'm coming, I ain't coming talking no more because my wife right. need it. And that's just, that's just how it is. Okay, in your personal... Now, what was that for me again? Remind, remind me. Personally. Your greatest accomplishment in your, I guess, your career. <sighs> greatest accomplishment. Honestly, most people probably wouldn't understand it, but everything that I gained, I wouldn't even say that was the, the accomplishment. The fact that God heard me. My greatest accomplishments was, I remember when I was aggravated, when I did, like I said, get hired from Atlanta Airport, when the company that I was working for at the time, when they were flying me, when I would cut through Atlanta to get to wherever I was going, I would watch the young men push people around in the wheelchair. I would watch young men pass the snacks, everything that I was applying for while having a job that God had for me. So it's like, while you were trying to beat down this door, God had better for you. But because I didn't see that, I was getting aggravated. I was getting, you know, depressed and anxiety, just, you know, what's going on? When he had better for me all along, I just had to step out on faith and close everybody out. And at that time, what I did was um, I got off of social media. You know, everybody I knew at high school, you know, they going to college. I'm seeing people in fraternities. I got depressed and it's like, I ain't doing nothing. I went from being the man to now, you know, everybody moving but me, you know. So I, I just I just got tired. So it's not the personal things that I've gained. It's the fact that he heard me. It's the, That's my accomplishment. The fact that the ball is rolling, the train is moving, and now I can make headway now. So that, that's my personal accomplishment. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, the girls and I love you. I appreciate it. And we're love proud too. of you. Thank you, thank you. And we know that everything you do is for the betterment of our family. Right. And I just want to say thank you from your Trail World girls. And I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I want to let people to know, you know, even when you see us now, you don't see pain. You don't see trouble or struggle, but do know during the marriage, it's all of those things. You know, there's times where, you know, my wife didn't understand why I was away. I think it was one time she asked me, you know, well, not actually, I think she told me, you know, I didn't think that, you know, you love to be home because you was away. And it's like, no, and I, and I want people to see this because as a guy that he asked me on the boat, how do you keep home grounded? Because he's in a position where he's trying to tell his woman, like, look, I need to ride over because I need to make this happen. And I don't think he has found the best ways to tell her. And like I told my wife, if I didn't put in the extra time, how would I have the extra money to put towards college debt? If I didn't put in extra time, there is no extra money for an extra vehicle when we already have one. So there's going to be sacrifices. So for all those that don't understand, don't plan to climb the ladder if you don't plan to sacrifice. If you don't have sacrifice in the vocabulary of climbing the ladder, don't climb it. Stay average. Stay normal. It's not happening. Um, for the fellas, I failed at communicating. I was the type of person, look, all I see is what's in front of me. Get your ass on board. Let's go. I ain't got time to explain. I ain't got time to talk. And that's not the way to do it. But what was going on was I was stepping out on faith. I was following God and God wasn't giving no blueprint. All I said was put the train on the track and get it started. I didn't say, hey, when we get down 200 miles, tell me. When we get around this bend, tell me. No, I was so desperate. I don't need to know nothing. I just need to be on the train. If you get it started, I'm following you. So if I'm following him, 
I couldn't tell her what it was. I couldn't give her the blueprint because hell, I didn't know. All I knew is if God is directing this train, I'm following, but I didn't have the proper communication skills. It was just, look, get the hell on board. And if you ain't on board, get off. And that wasn't right, you know? So um, I failed a lot in the beginning. Um, I guess hell, one of the reasons why I didn't go to therapy because everything that I knew that was wrong, they were gonna remind me, you know? Um, probably said many things that I shouldn't have done, done things that I shouldn't have done. But I will say this, she has been a great wife through and all. She has been my blessing. Um, she's been the reason why I went hard. I remember when I was, um, at the time I was a relief mate. And as soon as we decided to make it official, um, I was scared cause I never, I don't like asking nobody for nothing. And I'm in my room contemplating how am I going to ask the captain to give me the raise for first mate. I knew I was, you know, capable of it and ready for it, but I didn't know what to say. So I'm in my room pacing. I'm like, you know, whatever. I know I need the extra money. I'm going to go up here. Excuse me. So I went up to the wheelhouse. And I'm like, look, Cap, you know, I've been working hard. I know I'm ready for this position. Little do you know, he was already ready for me to ask. He just wanted me to come up and say it. But because I was trying to do better for her, that motivated me to get up off my ass and I need to make this happen. Nobody's going to get in the way. And sure enough, he signed off on it. And from there, the ball was rolling. And like I said, I've always wanted better for my family, but I didn't know how to communicate that. I just saw, damn, don't you see me moving? But she needed me to communicate that in other ways. And I don't come from a family where it's a whole bunch of soft communicating and laying it down as simple as a child. It's like, look, get your ass on board. Let's go. And if you don't understand, that's on you. And that's not how you have a successful marriage. So I failed a lot at that. So that's another thing. Um, the personal side is learning how to communicate. Like we just came back from a family trip and I failed at something simple. And she had to remind me, you shouldn't have done that. You know, um, you you know, you you can you change this? And normally it'd be I ain't trying to hear that shit. But it's like if you want to have a successful marriage, you gotta hear that shit and you gotta change. So immediately, I just stopped the car and what I fucked up on, I corrected immediately. We're not gonna wait till we get home. We're gonna handle this now and put all pride aside because it's like you gotta make this right. You know, these people are on your team. These are not opponents. You can say fuck opponents. But people on your team, if you wrong, fix it. People that's on your team, when they hurt, fix it. And considering God has blessed me to be the head, um, I'm trying. I'm, I'm I'm turning what's important before you know. Hell, on my stomach, I got all about the Benjamins. That's because when you come from nothing and you don't come from much, you're trying to chase what's gonna get you out. You you're trying to chase what's gonna allow you to have a better life. And that that that's honestly where Mr. Go Harder come from. You know, not running from anything anymore, but before I'm running out of the small town. I'm running away from the small thinking. I'm running away from the crab in the uh, barrel. I'm running from all of that. So I got to go so hard so I don't come back. But I want to give free game to people. Do understand, I said this to somebody, when you climb that ladder, do understand if everybody's right here, when you climb that ladder, it's hard to get advice from down here, up here. They don't have it because they're not up there. So that means when it's time to fall, that's a long way back down. You best believe these motherfuckers here, they waiting. Mm -hmm. And it's sad. And I had to learn that the hard way. No matter who it is, there's a football uh, coach at uh, Clemson. And he said, the very people that will bring you up can't wait to take you down. Just think about it with football. You know, you win a game. Oh, man, they the best. You lose the game. That motherfucker ain't shit. You know, like, damn, last week I was a man. And that's the same way with friends and family. So for the guys that are listening to this, Hey, man, I'm, I'm hoping that I can inspire anybody because that's what it's all about, man. When I'm in that wheelhouse, I'm in my basement, I'm listening to these videos. I appreciate you, Eric Thomas. I don't know you, but I appreciate you. TDJ, you have definitely saved my life. Um, back in October, I forgot what day, but it was definitely 2011. I was in Atlanta, and I was at the lowest of the low. Um, you know, I, I, I couldn't even afford to pay a Metro phone bill. Metro has got to be the cheapest. I don't even think cricket the cheapest no more. Metro is probably the cheapest. I couldn't even pay that. So anyway, um, at this point, I didn't want to go to just any church and hear no word. I needed to hear something that was going to get me out of what I was at. I remember my grandma raised me on T.D. Jakes. And, you know, I'm like, look, God, I need to hear something. I ain't going to just no regular church because I need to hear something. So I pulled up my YouTube and I'm like, God, direct me to where I need to go. And um, I typed in T.D. Jakes and no lie, telling you the truth. The first message that came up is your faith must stand trial. And at that time, that's all I had to stand on, like. 
I ain't got nothing to stand on. I'm broke as a joke. I'm lost as hell. No plan, no vision, and nobody to help me see clear. You know, and that's what God needed. He needed to strip away everybody. He needed to make it to where you have to come to me. You have to seek me. You have to chase me. You have to pray. And honestly, the first two tattoos that I had on my arm was faith and favor. So now he was forcing me to stand on that. And when I heard that message, your faith must stand trial, that whole message from the start to finish saved my life. And that, from that point, 12 years so, uh, strong, that's all I've been on. Now, granted, I'm not your traditional Christian, Baptist, however you want to put it, but I am a follower of Christ. And can't nobody tell me otherwise that that man is real. I know for sure. I know that I know that I know, and I'm sticking with it. And for all those that choose to do otherwise, hey, you, you, hey free will. But I know for me and my family, that's what we do. You know, we are covered. Um, I done prayed over my family. My wife has prayed before they put them drop these drywalls up. You see, scriptures are all over this wall. I done prayed and marked every damn door, holy oil and cross. I want this house to be so covered. Anybody that's in my neighborhood, if you walk the damn sidewalk, I want you to feel uncomfortable if you come past this house, if you're not of the word, if you're not of the man upstairs, or if you have any ill will or ill intentions, I don't even want you to feel comfortable. So for the family members that don't feel welcome, that's why I didn't pray. So anyway, um, that's what's going on with that, man. So like I said, I hope the best for everybody. Much love. I take pride in doing these videos. I'm going to start doing more with wifey because uh, she helps me with, you know, getting these creative ideas. And uh, it's good to just hear me, stop hearing me talk, you know, you can bounce her in. Plus, uh, I want to start incorporating her as well, you know, because she can give a female touch that I can't give uh, to the ladies when that time comes. And um, thank you for listening to us. Um, we're going to enjoy the rest of my birthday night. Um, I thank God for everything. Uh, I guess I can close out with saying I thank God for allowing me to see 32 healthy. Mm -hmm. I thank God for allowing me to see 32 in the house that I want. I wanted a basement home, and that's where we are now. Yeah. Um, for the videos, y'all pretty much, y'all can go in there and see. I got uh, the house tour on there. But uh, I thank God for it because actually I get to have plans, you know, with my home, all of these pages are the plans of this house that we're in. And I thank God for it because it's a blessing. Like I said, this is our fourth brand new construction home. I've been able to make this happen for my wife. Um, and she deserves it. We deserve it. My girls deserve it. I want the best for all of them. Um, they give me purpose. They give me the fuel that I need to make sure Mr. Goharta don't die out. So she asked earlier, will it ever die out? As long as I have them as the fuel, it won't. And even then, it has to continue to be the fuel because God has something in me. I haven't fully tapped into what that purpose is, but I'm going to find it out. And um, I'm just thankful. You got anything you want to add, boo? Yeah, but I just want to give you your flowers while you can smell them. I love you. I appreciate, I appreciate the man you are. Um, for and to our family you haven't led us astray yet thank you so i'm trusting you to lead and um i'm in your corner i appreciate it always I, I know you know both of us are uh we we you know we've had right. our yeah, our right. marriage a marriage is marriage right but i'm here and i know that you're here and i, I know that you it. love me and i love you and we're gonna do this that's it that's it and we're gonna keep as my dad say, tighten it up. That's it. That's it. And in the near future, we'll be doing more stuff on here because a lot of people, you know, we won't get you fully in our business, but a lot of people, uh, they selling the fake shit with that whole marriage shit. Like when I say it's not all what it cracked up to be, you really got to find you somebody that's for you because they selling some shit out here where, you know, of course she thought the fairy tale and I thought, hey, <laughs> just once you set the plan, she's just going to follow. No, you know, women have a different... They they got a different transmission up here. Well, when we talking, they needed they need to be said another way. And like I told my wife, she was raised as a flower. I was raised as a rock. So it's hard to bring the two together. You know, I know how to talk the rock talk. I don't know how to talk the flower talk because I wasn't around that. You know, so that's a challenge for me that I'm learning to uh, to to embrace. And with her being a flower, she raises my girls to be flowers. So it's like, man, you know. I got to find new creative ways how to talk, how to see things. And, you know, when I hear crying, they're like, damn, what you crying for now? You know, but that's not how it's supposed to be approached because, you know, they don't need that. Um, so either way, we'll get into that. Appreciate y'all for joining in. Hope y'all enjoyed this video and there should be more to come. Y'all have a good one. Good night. Good night.